COVID-19 is caused by a virus that spreads primarily through the air and enters our bodies through our nose, mouth, or eyes. When inhaled, the tiny viral particles can reach the air sacs in our lungs, directly leading to our bloodstream. Viruses that transmit as airborne particles, such as the viruses that cause COVID-19 and measles, pose a significant risk, as they can squeeze into small places, nearly 10,000 times smaller than a human hair, travel long distances, up to 20 to 30 feet, and stay active in the air for at least four hours. Remember the four Ds that help you assess and manage risk? Dilution, in the form of ventilation, helps clean indoor air, and it's an essential part of reducing the risk of the spread of COVID-19 and other airborne infectious diseases. But what do we mean by ventilation? Essentially, the process of adding or removing air from a building. Think of this as you think about washing and disinfecting. Just as we wash our hands or clean surfaces to reduce the spread of diseases, ventilation cleans the air to prevent and protect people from spreading or inhaling virus-containing airborne particles while indoors. By adding clean outdoor air, we can dilute the concentration of virus-containing aerosol particles and reduce the risk for people inside the building. An Occupational and Environmental Health and Safety OEHS, professional can support you in this process. They can help you assess the HVAC system and the risks that need to be addressed in your organization's building. It is faster, simpler, and more cost-effective to review and implement scientifically proven steps now as we continue to work to protect our workers and community from COVID-19 and other infectious diseases. There are specific dilution techniques and technologies that can help reduce the risk of exposure to an airborne virus like COVID-19, and they don't require you to become an expert in ventilation and HVAC systems. For some easy changes to make your HVAC system more effective at reducing the spread of COVID-19, use the following guidelines. Increase airflow to occupied spaces when possible and direct clean airflow to contaminated zones. For example, in an ER or waiting room, Clean air should first flow through the area where employees primarily sit and work, then move toward the waiting room or other areas where sick or potentially infected patients gather. Be mindful to keep doors and windows closed. Medical buildings are designed to allow for pressurization that moves air in the safest, most effective direction for protection and for cleaning within an HVAC system. Open windows or doors can throw the entire system off balance and make it ineffective. Where you can control your HVAC fan at the thermostat, set the fan to the on position instead of auto. If possible, based on weather conditions, open outdoor air dampers beyond minimum settings to reduce HVAC air recirculation. Replace missing or dirty filters, use correctly sized filters and those with higher minimum efficiency reporting values, 13 or above, and confirm gasket seals integrity to ensure a tighter filter fit, efficient air cleaning, and to prevent recirculation of infectious particles throughout the building. In addition to making adjustments to the HVAC system, other supplemental technologies can help dilute the air. These can include using a HEPA air filter or upper air ultraviolet germicidal technology. When using different tools to help dilute the air, you want to focus on moving the air away from people to either a HEPA air filter, up toward a ceiling return duct, or the upper air ultraviolet germicidal technology. Remember, your primary goal is to limit exposure to the virus. This is the most important thing you can do in reducing its spread. Adding or enhancing air dilution indoors where people are at risk is a simple and effective way to ensure that your organization reduces the risk of transmission of airborne diseases, prevents potential liabilities, and increases trust from your community.